This is Ambush Alley. It's a big district build. It's two foot by two foot footprint. This whole thing is built on four of our new sculpted texture battle boards. Uh, so they have this great cobblestone texture sculpted right at the top. And it's a super fast way to build a uh, two by two coverage. Cool cobblestones you use any sort of city build on there. Uh, this collection of pieces is very heavily focused on building pieces. We've got a lot of uh, wood floors, corner posts, and walls. There's some secret doors, regular doors, windows, a couple LED walls. Uh, we also have a great variety of roofs in here. So there's thatched roofs, there's a few green roofs, and there's a bunch of the dark roofs. Uh, we're breaking it up with the freestanding wooden walls, using them to make yards all about. Uh, there are some widow's walk scaffolding on the roofs, uh, a little bit of dressing to top it off. Uh, terrific collection of pieces to do any sort of building, be it a bunch of small distributed buildings like this, or you could put them together to make one larger building. Uh, in this case, we've built this to feel like the darker, shadier part of town. Uh, the buildings are pretty run down. Uh, they're pretty close together. Uh, this is the sort of place where maybe the Thieves Guild has set up shop in here. They used to be residences, and now it's been sort of taken over by a Thieves Guild, or maybe it's a gang turf, uh, or maybe it's just uh, where a criminal contact lives, or whatever it needs to uh, to get your players to sort of come on in here and uh, face some danger. Uh, it's a fantastic setup for a street fight, right? Lots of little narrow alleys on the side. Uh, there are these fences everywhere to sort of break up combat. Lots of places to duck for cover and tons of fun uh, roof combat potential. Right? Lots of raised playable space up on the roofs, multi-level balconies and the like. Uh, really good for an ambush, an assassination, uh, surprise attack, or sneaking around. Maybe you have to do some spying and then it turns into a combat or whatnot. But should be a very fun dynamic encounter. Uh, it's supposed to feel like the really dangerous part of town. So let's take a look at some of the uh, specifics that we've put in here and some of the techniques that we've used. So we'll start over in the uh, this corner over here. So for whatever reason, we've got four of these, the, all the, the thatched roofs have ended up as just small, simple four by four cottages, which kind of feels right for thatched roof. Uh, these thatched roofs are big, solid one-piecers, and they fit perfectly over our Dwarven Forge floor foggers. Uh, so if you want to add a little life to your build, you can turn on your floor foggers, pop it in there, and you'll have a smoking chimney. Something like that. Definitely adds to the immersion. Here and all over the place, we've taken the freestanding wooden walls and used them to make little yards. It's a great way to uh, break up the line of sight and uh, kind of break up the big open spaces. Uh, in, in this case, this encounter, we're trying to make as many possible places for people to hide and jump out. So there's lots and lots of little doors everywhere and little little nooks to uh, run away from and ambush spots and the like. So small building over here, coming over across the street. Uh, we have uh, another small building using a diagonal wall on the front. It's a nice showcase of all the dynamics we can do with the roofs. We have this neat little uh, two by two scouting spot it's right the little pop-up that has our um, the new banister corner posts there holding up the little two inch peak so that's a good spot there could be a spy to scout on and then uh diagonal roof kind of nooking it all together uh underneath it here pop this roof off is what piece we've got uh so this is a sample almost all of the windows in here have this armored shutter right which is cracked open a little bit and feels like it means business so it, it could pop open and someone could fire a crossbow out of there and slam it closed, or you could lock it and make it, maybe someone could try and jump in and maybe take the strength check to open it up, but it gives it a very kind of dangerous and sort of fortified feel. Uh, the, the windows that don't have the armored shutters are generally boarded up, like we have uh, over here, boarded up windows or armored windows. So it just feels very inhospitable and less like a place where a lot of people will be living and uh, more like a place where you're going to get shanked shinned and murdered working around the back of this building uh the little lookout post has a little ladder using the um just biscuit in the side of the building so there's a nice little way to sneak up like here more 
fences everywhere we can, little fences and doors, little places for people to zigzag in and out. Um, very confusing little labyrinth of combat on the street here, if it comes to that. Uh, in the back here is another four by four building with a thatched roof, pretty basic building there. Um, coming into the middle, another use of the two by two floor, the little narrow walls to make a tiny little shack here. So this could be a little scout shack or a guard shack, or maybe this is an outhouse. You could pop it behind one of the buildings if you want. Uh, but another way to break up the street somewhere where someone could jump out. We're using a secret door panel over here as a little barricade. So another spot someone could hide for some cover. Um, also out on the street, we have, speaking of cover, we have the little hand cart, which is such a fun detail uh, here. And this, of course, canvas, woo, canvas wrap bundle is removable. So you could also throw that down and use that for cover or dressing and whatnot. Fun details. I like uh, connecting this building to this building, we have our little clothesline. So this is a, uh, a short line of weathered string that has uh, pole accessory pegs on either side. So it can peg into a variety of our pole accessory holes. In this case, it's pegging into the side of the roofs and the corner post, uh, the, the holes on the side of the corner post. You could also put it in any of the pole accessory holders alike, or the little rivet uh, biscuit hole fillers that we have. So lots of places you could hang it. And then we're going to give you a sheet with uh, these little pieces of clothing that are printed on felt that you'll get to uh, cut out whichever variety you want and glue them on. This is this prototype Miles put together. Uh, there's these are paper, but the final will be uh, felt, so it'll have a nice fabric feel to it. Uh, so this is all a little prototype just put together today. We've got the wooden balcony here, and it's just biscuited right to the side of this building, so it's on really nice and scarily, with a two-inch railing on the front. And then underneath it, we have this one long piece. This is a corbel row facade. So that's attached to the corner posts using, uh, it's got its integral pegs. Uh, and that not only kind of makes this whole thing look good, but it also helps hold up this balcony if you're putting your lead miniatures on there or something. Uh, it also, this can serve as a way for players to get up if they wanted to like jump up to the balcony or onto the clothesline. So they could use that to get on there. And then to top it off, on the bottom we have our new Gothic Lantern LED piece. So it's a little modular LED element. You could pop that out and swap in any of your wall-mounted LED wall-mounted LED units. Uh, you can use your torches, your serpent orbs, your rune stones, anything else that you've got to swap out the light. No, um, did that look anything. And it's the same uh, same style lantern as in the uh, freestanding LED lantern posts in uh, Lowtown also. So there's some nice visual continuity. Maybe, in fact, someone even stole this from one of those lamp posts and mounted it on their wall. We have, uh, this is the bay window roof. Uh, it's fun. It had this really nice sort of weathered copper patina and hamster put together uh, so it looks all Asian, kind of has a nice pop against everything else. And this is biscuited right to the side of the uh, roof here. So you could lift this whole thing off as one unit if you want to get in there for the combat and the like. Back over here, we have the biggest building of the bunch. And this makes use of the diagonal walls up front, the same armored, this is the, the narrow armored shutter narrow wall and that cool speakeasy door just really fortified right there's no easy means of egress anywhere here everything is really sort of fortified shuttered could be locked down it makes it really hard on the players if they're walking the street there's no safety from well whoever's attacking them from all sides um also this is designed to be mostly a you sort of outdoor encounter but if your players do break in and want to pop into the buildings uh the roofs are all pegged together using our biscuit system so that you can remove them as one unit right so if you wanted to get somebody in here let's see if we can pull this up you pull that roof off we can pull this roof off so you can just fly this off use it as one unit and then get in there and um, see what's going on inside move your minis around inside and the like but pretty easy to access uh in the middle of the game and to reveal what's inside right you could dress this up have some minis in there have some treasure in there whatever that gets revealed as they pop the roofs off uh, and so it's a nice showcase of our big new diagonal wall and the smaller diagonal wall, just how that kind of gives new interesting building shape possibilities. So you gotta dodge that clothesline. There. All right, so moving to across the street, 
Over here, on the back side of this building, we've got another of that LED Gothic lantern. Uh, there it gives a nice little spot of light. And there's the hanging ladder uh, just biscuited to the side of the building to give you egress up to this secret door panel. You could put a panel over the secret door if you wanted to or leave it open like that. Uh, we've got a hoist attached to the side of the, uh, it's just pegged right to the side of the corner post there. So you give you some fun shenanigans with that. Coming up on the roof, not only are there platforms, but you have this uh, hanging ladder pegged on here, so you can use this to jump off the uh, you jump off the fence onto the ladder and sneak your way up if you wanted to go that way. So this building has lots of character here, right? The sort of fun bit is we have this poet's nook on the side here, uh, and this thing is built up on top of the bay window. So let's pop this off. And take a look at this thing. So we have, so we have the poet's nook is can't leave it off the side. It's on top of this bay window, so it's a really nice kind of tiered effect. Is like as each jut out gets a little bigger, a little bigger, it makes the whole thing feel uh, very kind of overhanging and oppressive. It feels like an old medieval city that way. Um, and the top of the rooms, and then over here we have this is the corner railing platform with a narrow railing up on the side, whole thing's biscuit to the side of the building, and then we have the pole accessory holder. This is just slides on there, and then this has the uh, little spyglass pole accessory. So this becomes a really neat little balcony that you can use as a lookout point. Uh, he uses to spy on the uh, players, or places snipers could pop out there, or somewhere that someone could, players could jump up, jump on, get on into the building that way and get up to the roof. And then on the back here, so we made like a little sort of open air porch using the new uh, banister corner posts. And this one hasn't even been finished painting. This one is, it'll be a light, uh, the diagonals will be light like that, the little strut. So take that in conjunction with the roofs and you have like a neat little uh, overhang. It could be a porch, it could be a shed, uh, it could be a storefront or boardwalk and whatnot. So, and easy to access at the table, you just pop the roof, lift the roof off. There's one unit to get on in there. Oh, the last bit is there's, is every which way there's using these freestanding, uh, the freestanding walls to make fences, right? There's many, many places we can have sort of broken off the different areas to make it difficult to walk through. But you know what? The players can vault over it, can break through it, blast it with a fireball, whatever. There's like, gives you opportunities to interact with the train. It's easy to pop those things out if they do get destroyed. Um, and it should make for exciting combat. So speaking of exciting combat, let's come on up to the roof because this whole thing was designed to have a bunch of layers that you could have combatants on and have them all be sort of different and exciting. So the ground level, very cluttered up. There's a lot of a lot of dressing, a lot of walls and uh, tight areas. The roofs, much more open and freeform and uh, great view, great vantage point for uh, sniping and the like. So uh, starting out at the end here, we've got this little ladder to hop up to this lookout post. And from this, you could there's a, a magnetic perch here and some rope, you can use it to throw on over here and climb up from this. There's also uh, a ladder hanging down. You could hop off the hop off the fence and climb on up here and get up to this this rooftop run. So we're using the scaffolding. So you run across over here. We've got the magnetic trap door to the roof here. So this would connect into this building. So this is one way to get up to the rooftop level. If you didn't want to climb from the outside, you could get into the building, climb on up. Right, so then coming up off the trap door, we've got another uh, another magnetic perch here with 38 millimeter stairs uh, going over to his narrow platform. This is pegged really securely to this roof here. And then bridging that gap, we have a secret door panel here. And what's kind of fun about that is you could use it, you could kick it out uh, to make it hard for people to chase after you or whatever, to have to make the big jump. Another of the narrow scaffolding platforms here. And this is pegged right into the roof, so it's super secure and sturdy. Uh, then down on this side of the roof, we've got another magnetic perch, and this has got a hanging ladder, just biscuited right into the side, and that feeds down to stair pillar and 38 millimeter stairs, so there's yet another way to hop up on this roof, get to a good ambush spot, uh, and then over into this six-inch bridge, which goes into this little lookout tower. All right, so let's look at this building in the back here, and here, you know, let's, to get a better view, let's pull these things out. So we're just going to pop these out as one unit. 
pop that off. I'm going to have anybody look at that. and pop this roof off here. All right. So back here, this is just a pretty plain uh, four by four building. Uh, it's got the armored door and armored shutters, the speakeasy door. Uh, we have this fun little bit over here. It's using the modular barricade, uh, the large on the bottom, the small on the top, and the cam strap bundle to make a neat little barricade into this this dead end alley here, which has a couple doors. So this is yet another good spot for cover, ambushing, and the like. We have the secret door panel down here, which is uh, we've taken the broken panel, this is the large one on the front, and the small one in the back, and it lets you actually see through into the building. Uh, it's a great spot that someone could spy out or snipe out of, or maybe the players want to break through uh, into the building, another way into the building. Uh, gives good variation in your look on your walls and on your buildings. And freestanding uh, freestanding walls to make a fence here. Yet again, another fence. Uh, and then our last, in the back here, we've got this little 4x4 four four cottage with thatched roof on top, uh, rounding out the rest of the buildings. This thing's got a it's a four foot by six foot footprint. It's got this little open air area in the back. Again, we've done a bunch of those little open air pass throughs, armored shutters, uh, and then it's got some fun roof stuff happening here. Uh, this bridge and this platform both feed into the little uh, lookout tower here, uh, and this has doors here and here, uh, so that you could, someone could hold up and they could lock the doors in there. This could have a trap door down into the uh, into the building here. As well as there's this hoist up here, you can do some fun uh, some fun shenanigans with the hoist. Maybe have this uh, drop a rope down. Thieves are using it to climb up or whatever. Or drop something down on the players, or maybe they hook onto it and swing up like Indiana Jones style. And then we got the uh, platform going over here onto the diagonal, up to uh, up through some more stairs, onto yet another magnetic perch, and then onto uh, another of these narrow platforms. So what we did here was we've pegged the uh, the bottom of this platform, has a couple of holes, those uh, with some peg holes into the uh, into the roof. So this is really firmly, securely attached to the roof, and the roofs are all basically together, so this is one solid unit. And it lets us cantilever this off, off the side and then have the hanging ladder hanging off there, so it looks kind of dramatic and dangerous. And we've got some railing pieces we didn't use, uh, so you could kind of put some railings on these to make it feel more safe, but I wanted it to feel dangerous right so you could sort of fall off and it's an, and also kind of easier to get up there if you wanted to have people scramble up the roofs and the like and then this ladder feeds us onto yet another magnetic perch and uh another magnetic trap door in the back of the building here so this is another way into the building uh and then at some point if you want you could just start jumping from building to building um so it, as if we didn't have enough little spots for people to jump out. There's trap doors and there's balconies and the like. There's also some secret doors hidden around. So there's a secret door hidden around on the back side of this building. So you could pop that panel off and have somebody pop out there. There's a secret door hidden uh, right here. So someone could pop that panel out and jump out and sneak around. Uh, we've got one over here that has the broken panels on it. So it's a really kind of neat effect. So you can kind of see right into the building and maybe someone smashes through it or the players could smash through it and jump into the building and the like. So uh, where's the last? Oh, and then there's a last uh, secret door. This one is our, is open here, but you could also seal that up with a panel uh, and have someone jump out and the like. So every every turn there are there are little tiny nooks, little alleys on the side from the main street. Uh, people can ambush from any side. So wherever you crack it, this is uh, should be a very dangerous, surprising, dynamic encounter. I hope uh, I hope this build inspires you and gives you an idea of what you could do with this uh, this district. You could build this or any multitude of other cool street fight ambush scenarios.